Calgary Chamber has grown to be one of the most progressive and influential organizations in the country. And yet their goal has always remained the same. Do whatever it takes to make their members' businesses better. It's now my pleasure to invite the uh, Chamber's president and CEO to the podium, Adam Legg. Adam, come on down. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to celebrate small business here in Calgary. And so what, what are small businesses in our community? Well, they're very important because there are risk takers and our dreamers. There are innovators and our sparks. There are foundation and our peak. They're the ones who believe they can do something different, something better, something meaningful, and something as of yet unmet. They're converters of their talents and passions into something greater. They're our friends, our neighbors, chief cooks and bottle washers. They wear all hats and they are everywhere. This city, this province, and this country is built off of small business. Of all businesses out there, approximately 90% of them are small. They're your dry cleaner, your accountant, your corner store, your favorite restaurant, your plumber, your coffee hangout, your bookkeeper, and your dog walker. Almost every facet of every part of your day is touched through small business. They're the ones who dream. They take risks. They see a chance to do something better, whether it's a different lifestyle, to be their own boss, whatever the reason, they take risks. And they risk a lot, and for that we thank them. And one week a year, cities across the country celebrate small business. And we're hosting Small Business Week here in Calgary to bring together a variety of activities that showcase the greatness of our small businesses in this community. The greatness that they deliver to their customers, to this community each and every day. Why do we celebrate small business? Well, I think it's because they deserve it. They don't often make headlines, they don't often get invited to VIP events, and they often, often aren't called to meet with government. But the job creation, the innovation, the economic impact generated by small business is worthy of our recognition. And for some, tonight receiving a small business award can help open doors. Recent small business award winners have indicated to us that after receiving the award, it's been easier for them to achieve things like financing, or meeting with key companies and customers. It's helped build their brand and their recognition. I have to tell you, by looking through the nominees and the candidates for the awards tonight, I'm energized. Energized by the quality of service, by the quality of companies we have in this community. We have technology companies, food companies, insurance companies, environmental companies, a bookstore amongst our nominees tonight. Such diversity and such impact. And I hope that other small businesses in Calgary or in the room tonight even, will keep doing the great things that they are. So as a good thank you and congratulations to all of the nominees tonight. Whether you do or don't go home with the award, you've made an impact. And I hope that you have, we have helped to raise your profile because you do deserve it. An inspiring story you'll hear tonight is that of our keynote speaker, Zara Al-Harazi. 15 years ago, she came to Calgary as an immigrant not knowing a soul, and tonight she's going to tell you what she has learned on her way to being the sole owner of an award-winning design firm that has won more awards than you and I could possibly hope to achieve. And so we're very appreciative of her being able to share her story with us tonight. And so in closing, I hope you get a chance to connect with each other, whether that's to celebrate your own individual accomplishments and achievements, your progress, whether it is a sing uh, singular new customer achieved today or this week, or whether it's an award, Whatever it may be, take the time to recognize and celebrate that accomplishment because you are putting in countless hours, countless headaches, countless amounts of passion in driving your small business forward for the benefit of you, your family, your employees, and this city. And for that, we thank you. Congratulations to everybody and hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, Adam. Appreciate that. And of course, we're going to continue on because that hardware is just, it's calling my name. I want to lift up those uh, little napkins there and, and reveal who's won what. But apparently, I'd be escorted out myself if I did that. I'd like to, at this point, invite to the podium Executive Vice President, Business and Agric Agriculture at ATB Financial, Wellington Holbrook, to introduce our guest speaker.
Thank you, everyone. You know, um, Small Business Week is a pretty special time of year. And you know, for all the reasons Adam just described, um, it's, it's pretty important we take the moment to celebrate the small business uh, owners and entrepreneurs who really do make a difference. Uh, we live in a very special place in Alberta, and especially here in Calgary as well. We probably live in one of the most entrepreneurial centers in North America, if not the world. And it makes our communities, it makes our economy a better place to be. And I, I, you know, I, I got to tell you a bit of a, a personal story uh, very quickly, I promise. <laughs> no, very quickly. Um, you know, there was one thing I knew that I didn't want to be when I grew up, and that was a banker. And I've been a banker for 20 years. <laughs> it was, I was sure of it. And, and I'll tell you why, is that uh, my mom is an entrepreneur. She uh, started a business in 1981, and the worst day in my house was the day the banker came to visit. Because the banker came to visit and scolded her, told her all the things she was doing wrong, why she couldn't do what she wanted to do, and couldn't get her business where she wanted it to be. And of course, you know, 40 years later, um, she, or 30 years later, excuse me, she's uh, still going very strong. Of course, she's 68 years old and hasn't figured out how to retire yet, but that's another story altogether. Um, but all, you know, growing up, I knew I wasn't going to be a banker. Um, but then it hit me that actually uh, one of the ways we can support and, and help uh, small businesses be successful is, is by changing the way we support them with their banking services with getting them the financing and capital they need and, and, uh, and changing the way that feels for a small business owner or entrepreneur. And uh, for, uh, I feel very fortunate I found ATB Financial who's helping me achieve that and we're trying to change the world and there's many other great financial institutions here tonight as well who I think are taking a very different approach to supporting business than we ever have in the past. But now to the really good story. I, I have the absolute honor to, uh, to introduce you to you tonight our guest speaker. Zara Al-Harazi will not take no for an answer. It is how she, built, it's how she is built, and it's why, it's why her success as the award-winning head of Foundry Communications does not surprise anyone. Zara grew up in Yemen, and until 1996, taught ESL at the Ye Yemen Lang uh, American Language Institute. Knowing no one, she emigrated to Canada with her family nearly 15 years ago. Best described as a dizzying blur of advancement and achievement, her career has been anything but mundane. She's now sole owner and creative director of Foundry Communications, an internationally awarded marketing and communication studio known for its strategic approach to design. In a market saturated with monotonous corporate branding, Foundry is weaving complex marketing strategies, quickly earning buzz for their ability to, to build amazing brands. A staff of three in 2006 grew to 18 by 2012. During her career in the marketing communications industries, Zara has been awarded multiple accolades, including Calgary's Top 40 Under 40, Canadian Women Entrepreneur of the Year by Chatelaine, and has been named one of the most powerful women in Canada by the Women's Executive Network. That's pretty awesome, eh? Wow. She also sits on the Board of Directors for our Entrepreneurs Organization, the Board of Directors for Alberta Women Entrepreneurs, and former member of the Board of Directors for both Immigrant Services Calgary and Ad Rodeo Association. Zara believes in giving back to the community that has supported her throughout her career, speaking at institutions such as um, ACAD, Young Women of Influence, ACE Nationals, the Globe and Mail Business Conference, the Toronto Board of Trade, Mount Royal University, Women in Philanthropy, Women's Executive Network and Entrepreneurs Organization, Insta Insta Istanbul University, holy, whew, that's, <laughs> wow. Zara has been a judge for many national design competitions such as Design Edge, Applied Arts, Elevated HR, New ARs, and the A Student Entrepreneurship Awards. I am very honored and pleased to present to you Zara. Zara, we're just going to focus your uh, PowerPoint here. So when I get, I'm going to put you on the spot if you want to come up to the microphone okay. here real quick. I want to ask you this because with your experience, with your business, and with your success, you could take your business to any city in Canada. Why choose Calgary? Why is it important to keep your, your roots here? You're jumping the gun. Cause that's I am. The is that last, the whole presentation? Oh, that's the that's last That's the last part of my speech, and I'm not going to answer that until She's I get to She's not going to. <laughs> and I, okay, well, then how about them flames? <laughs> But the vibrance in the city has got to be something that keeps you here. And I, I think that the 
interconnectivity between these businesses and of course a, a group like the chamber has got to only help somebody like yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And I actually will talk about that. Calgary has been an amazing place for me. And um, I don't think I could have done what I did anywhere else. Nice. And well, we got the PowerPoints. I, I don't want to take any more of your PowerPoints. Okay. I, I'm not going to stand up here with you. <laughs> okay. Zara. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wellington, for that really kind introduction. And I do bank with ATB, by the way. And um, Andrew, I'm on a plane to Napa tomorrow morning, so I am playing hooky and not going to be here for that weather. Um, so thank you all for being here today. <clears throat> I'm a Yemeni woman born in Uganda and raised in places that tourists rarely visit. My childhood stories end with, and then I fell off an elephant, or that's when the American ambassador's dog took me down. Um, the experiences that have shaped my life are typically hard to relate to. From a marriage at 17, three children by the age of 25, two civil wars, scud missiles that kept on coming, to a new life as new immigrants in Canada, where we didn't know anybody and we didn't understand the cultural landscape. From being a stay-at-home mom who didn't have a degree or a career to finding confidence and finding the entrepreneurial spirit that I didn't know I had. Between then and now are a thousand and one stories and lessons that I've learned along the way. And I'd like to share some of them with you today. So, sorry. I will get to the goats in a minute. Just bear with me. So I went to the international school. Um, I was the only Yemeni student and the only scholarship student in a private school for the children of all the ambassadors and all the expats. And I didn't really fit. Um, I tried to. I worked really hard at that. And my new Western behavior was, um, was met with disapproval from my family. And shor shortly thereafter, I found myself in an all-girls Arabic school where I didn't speak Arabic. I didn't dress like anybody. I didn't know anybody. And, and yet again, I was the outsider looking in. And I didn't fit there either. I spent many years of my life trying to blend in. I did not want to stand out, and I didn't want to be different. I changed my behavior, my accent, the way I dressed, my thoughts. I squeezed myself into a tiny little box, and I was ecstatic when I finally fit. From Oscar Wilde, my great mistake, the fault for which I can't forgive myself, is that one day I seized my obstinate pursuit of my own individuality. So back to the goats for a minute. They were wedding presents when I was 17, and we fed them to our 2,000 wedding guests over the course of a week-long wedding. <laughs> and for the longest time, I never wanted to tell anybody that story because everybody else got Tupperware. <laughs> But now I know better, and I can take pride in my differences. And if nothing else, I have a heck of a lot of good stories to tell. Fall in love. So we moved to Canada in 1996, and life was so drastically different for me back then. I had no ambition beyond the four walls of my house. I was my father's daughter, my husband's wife, and my children's mother. And I was bored out of my mind. I really wanted to do something, and my now ex-husband said, who will hire you? And so I stormed off to the mall for an afternoon of retail therapy. And I came home with a job at Danier Leather. And that minimum wage job was where I found my first inkling of what was to become a career that I just could not resist. I realized that reading people was an art, that you can motivate and change behavior. I was hooked on marketing in its simplest form. I outgrew Danier pretty quickly, and wanting more, I went back to school, graduating with a Bachelor of Design in Visual Communications at the age of 32 and with three children in tow. But I had found what I loved, that hunger that I could not shake. It's what gets me out of bed in the morning and keeps me up at night. Without it, my company is only a company, and my job is only a job. I would encourage anybody embarking on an entrepreneurial venture to find the one thing that you're passionate about. It could be anything, even banking. Um, <laughs> so I graduated, and I realized that I was far too stubborn to work for anybody else. And four years later, with a fire burning in my belly, I started Foundry. The golden rule. So following the business plan rule book, we um, st sat down and started working on how to define ourselves and our culture. And we started working on our core values as a company. And I realized very quickly that I didn't want to talk about things like integrity and honesty and excellence, because those things were a given. And they were set in stone, and I didn't even want to write them down. Um, I would, they were non-negotiable. I wanted our company values to align with how I wanted to live my life. So here are Foundry's core values. Surround yourself with good people. From clients to suppliers to staff, good people. Leave something behind. 
We give back. We volunteer at the soup kitchen and at the YWCA. We donate $100,000 of our time every year to help non-for-profits with their marketing materials. We try to make a difference. Never tolerate okay anything. Okay is not good enough. We, we aim for the best, and it's not just our best. We aim for the best. Laugh. Life is short. We are lucky enough to be in a business where we get to have fun every day. Make every minute count. And last but not least, be curious. And this one's really important. I encourage my staff to explore everything. I want them to take things apart and turn them upside down and throw them against the wall and see if they're going to stick. I tell them it's okay to make a mistake because how else are you going to learn? Don't make too many mistakes. But I always say that curiosity did indeed kill the cat. But then again, it had nine lives and it learned something new every time. Okay, let me clarify this. Do not hire your friends. Um, but work with people. Hire people that you want to be friends with. Hire people you admire and you enjoy. People that are better and smarter and faster than you. And then get the hell out of their way. Um, they won't let you down. And if they do, consider it a lesson learned. Okay, I still struggle with this one quite a bit on occasion. Um, I grew up in a country where women don't have a voice, and finding mine was a long, drawn-out process full of self-doubt and inner struggle. But finding a career that I loved and realizing that I had something to offer helped me find mine. And when I did, there was no stopping me. I had found my voice, and damn it, I was going to use it, and please step out of my way. Um, my now retired business partner, Allison, in frustration made us all take the Enneagram personality test. I rolled my eyes and said, let's get this over with. So I have to read this to you. This is what the Enneagram had to say about me. High side is innovative, optimistic, enthusiastic, witty, engaging, inspiring, big picture thinker, charming, and impulsive. The low side is irresponsible, demanding, stubborn, unbending, intellectually promiscuous, dilettantes, I don't even know what that means, dilettantes with a short attention span and poor follow through, overstimulated. The test was right. I was railroading others and not listening or learning. I was misusing my newfound voice. I realized that others have something to say and I have something to learn from them. I realized that I needed to slow down and, and wait for the people that weren't keeping the same pace for me because they were important. I realized that sheer willpower will build a company, but patience, process, and people will keep it thriving. And I realized that finding your voice is a wonderful thing, but learning when to shut up and just listen is just as wonderful of a thing. So how many of you take on more than you can handle? Come on, I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs in this room, and I know how we think, I know we can do it all, and we can do it better than anybody else, and we take on everything. It bogged me down, and I became the bi biggest bottleneck in my company. I stalled the process, and I frustrated the hell out of everyone around me. I learned to let go, let others do what they're best at. It's so empowering to give others that responsibility that they can now take and own and give yourself permission to breathe. And that was probably one of the biggest lessons I learned. I always used to say that I do my best work under pressure. And I realize now many missed opportunities later that that's just not true. So I've done a fair, my fair share of interviews over the last few years, and, and I keep getting asked questions like, is there a glass ceiling for women? And why is it harder for women to succeed? And quite honestly, I get, I'm getting really annoyed with the question. Um, I find myself thinking about it and pick up any magazine, and it'll tell you that tall, beautiful people with an Ivy League education are going to be successful, and nobody else, and I say bullshit. You are only as successful as you want to be. And don't let the crutches, don't use the crutches of anybody else's judgment and let that stop you. Um, there are people of all shapes and sizes and colors who have been and will be extremely successful. Moreover, I've never once felt in this country that I could not do anything I set my mind to doing. Canada is truly the land of opportunity. You just have to reach out for it. You can stay in the cage or you can fly. Your choice. So this one is, is embrace the, quir the quirks that define you. We are all human. We need to be real. Be ourselves. Be vulnerable. Watch Brenna Brown's um, TED Talk, uh, Vulnerability. It's amazing. Um, let people see who you really are. It's the most powerful selling tool you will ever have. I've been known to, quite often, 
okay, every day, kick off my heels and walk around the office in big fuzzy slippers. Um, it sends a signal that I'm comfortable with who I am. It makes my clients smile. It sold a campaign or two, I'm sure. I will apologize to no one for my love of my Romanian sheep fur booties that I bought roadside in Bucharest. So I don't have one mentor or two or ten. I have many, many mentors. And I learned a long time ago that I will never be too big or too successful to learn from other people. Some of the best learning in my life was when I reached out and asked for help. I want to buy my partners out. Well, you should ask so-and-so. He's done it half a dozen times. And that's how it started. And I learned so much in the time that it took me to buy somebody a cup of coffee. And I did it again and again and again. It's relationship building at its best. I now have friends, acquaintances, clients, business alliances that I would have never had otherwise. Reach out and ask people. It's really important as a small business owner. There are so many people out there that are willing to help and willing to sit down and talk to you. So about 90% of my job is to get into the target audience's head. It's how can we change and modify behavior? How can we make them to do what we want them to do? I question everything, and I challenge everything. And sometimes it's easy to get caught up in your own ideas and your own convictions. So legendary ad man Bill Burnbatch of DDP, uh, DDB, which is now a multinational uh, a creative powerhouse, carried this piece of paper in his pocket. And he had it for over 20 years. And he kept the same piece of paper in his pocket. And when he found himself digging in, fighting tooth and nail for a campaign, he excused himself from the room and walked out and pulled that piece of paper out of his pocket. And it said, what if they're right? And he then put it back in his pocket and walked back into the room with a new perspective and a new attitude. And I, am in the I'm in, I work in the service business. And remembering that has served me really well. What if they're right? We tend to, as entrepreneurs, at least I do, really believe in, in, in what I am doing. And a lot of times I have found that this is its tunnel vision. This is what I know. And there is so much out there for me to learn. So throw nine ping pong balls and they'll miss. Throw one and they will probably catch it. You have three seconds to get somebody's attention from a billboard or a magazine ad. All of us will only retain 5% of the information that comes at us in a, daily, in a daily basis because we get so much information from everywhere. Um, your audience will walk away with only one thing that they're going to remember from your elevator pitch. So what is it going to be? What is your single most important focus? It's the single most important thing that you can do to define your business and stand apart from the pack. Ours is fearless brand building. It's everything we do. Everything we do every day comes right back to fearless brand building. It makes our work so much easier to remember that and keep that in our back pockets. We win more international design awards than anybody in the city. We never have to pitch for business that comes to us, and it's always been that way. Same goes for talent. We have the best team in the country. And our, our um, uh, employees have come to us and moved to Calgary to work for us from everywhere in Canada, from Halifax and Toronto and Montreal. We live it. We breathe it. We do, our, our, um, our tagline is fearless brand building. So this, along with some of the others, is a lesson that you all probably already know, but it's so easy to lose sight of what is important, and I certainly did, and I got a really important wake-up call from my son. A couple of years ago, I was super busy. Foundry was so successful, and we were going at a crazy rate, and I didn't go to very many of my son's basketball games. In fact, I hardly went to any. And um, they made the playoffs. And at the end of the season, I decided that I was going to go and watch some of his playoff games. And um, my son very politely said to me, Mama, I love you, but don't come to any more of my games. He patiently explained that because I go to so few of his games, that when I'm there, I make him nervous and he doesn't play as well. And I realized that I was succeeding at every aspect in my business life, but I was failing my son. Last year, I was busier than ever. I was writing op-ed pieces for national magazines, speaking all over the country, running a company, buying my partner out, starting another business or two, I'm sitting on several boards, judging award shows, traveling like crazy. And I can count on one hand how many of my son's basketball games I missed. And the sad part it, is that it really was not hard to find that time. Now my son expects me to be there, and I am so grateful. 
So create your brand wagon back to being different and, and being appreciative that you are different and finding your differences and, and celebrating them. To a Yemeni immigrant, and this is the answer to your question, to a Yemeni immigrant, Calgary was as much of a mystery to me as Toronto or Vancouver or Montreal would have been, but I'm really glad we came here. Calgary's maverick attitude, its risk-taking cowboy swagger, its entrepreneurial zeal is the ideal environment for different. In some ways, for me, and more so for my artistic sensibilities, Calgary represents a blank canvas full of potential and possibility. It yearns for different experiences and different stories. It's got something to prove and an incredible capacity for growth. I feel my business and my entire life, for that matter, is on a parallel course with this city. I found my voice, found confidence, and found a career that I love. But most, most importantly, I've recognized what I've known all along. For better or for worse, I'm different, and I'm embracing it and taking pride in that. Ironically, now I help companies. Um, I make my living by helping companies find what makes them different, what makes them stand out and get noticed. It's a marketable skill coveted by individuals and businesses alike. There is no such thing as blending into success. Thank you, and good luck to you all. Outstanding. Thank you, Zara. Appreciate that. And thanks for reminding us that you'll be in Napa when it's snowing here on Saturday. That's great. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. It is now time to hand out the hardware. I know we've got 14 companies in the audience today whose owners, managers, and employees are sitting on pins and needles. Well, hopefully the chairs are more comfortable than that. Uh, waiting to find out if they've won one of these prestigious awards. This year saw the highest level of nominations for the Chamber's awards in at least a decade. The group of volunteers whittled the nominees down to the top finalists for each category or the Breakout Business of the Year Award. All of the category award finalists were given the further consideration for the final three for the top award, the RBC Small Business of the Year Award. All of the finalists were then put to Calgarians to choose who they wanted to see as the winner of each award, and over 2,400 people took to the voting. To kick things off with the presentation of the Environmental steward uh, Stewardship the Environmental Stewardship Award, it's easy for me to say at 7.40 p.m., is the Calgary Chamber's Chair of the Board of Directors, David Sprague. Come on up, David. I'm glad he had to say stewardship so that I don't have to say it too many times. Uh, first of all, on behalf of the uh, Calgary Chamber, uh, I want to congratulate all of uh, the companies in the audience today whose name I'm going to be calling over the course of the evening and, and others. Uh, Clearly, I hope you're very, very proud of yourselves. Uh, you do great, great work to get to this stage, and I know at the Chamber, we're very, very proud of you. Now, the other thing is, I listened very closely to Andrew and some of his rules. I heard you know, things about turning off cell phones and things like that so there wouldn't be any kind of interruptions, and, and I fully agree with that, and I endorse it, and, and I believe in following the rules. But what I didn't hear is anything about if your name is called, there's nothing restricting wild applause hooping and hollering, and anything else you feel you want to do to celebrate this evening. So just, I'm not sure how the other presenters are going to do this, but at least when I'm up here, you should feel very proud of yourselves and, uh, and make some noise. So let's do that. So let's get started. Right now. David Sprague. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was okay. <laughs> You got more opportunities to work on that. So let me, uh, let me get started. Uh, this, this award presented to the Calgary Small Business, who has demonstrated a commitment to leading environmental stewardship through improving its operations and limiting its environmental footprint and the footprint of its suppliers and clients. And this year, there are three outstanding companies, all dedicated to improving our environment. Here are your finalists. Uh, in alphabetical order, uh, Blue Planet Recycling provides condos with recycling services. The company's custom-made lined cardboard bins don't take up much space and can be filled with everything from paper and plastic to glass and cans. And here's the best part. You don't have to do any sorting. All the recyclable materials can be thrown into the same bin. That's Blue Planet Recycling. Sure. All right. Good. Our next finalist, 
Green Start initiatives started in 2010 and offers a popular no sorting blue bin service that lets people throw in all of their recyclables, again, paper, plastic, glass, cans, anything, into the same container. Green Start also offers an electronic recycling program and has an organic compost pilot program, which it's now working on with a few office buildings in Calgary to collect all of their food waste. Green Start initiatives. And our last nominee is Macmillan McGee Corporation. They help companies clean up contaminated soil and water. This includes everything from leaks from underground gas tanks, diesel spills, as well as contamination from chlorinated solvents and PCBs. The company does this through a high-tech system known as the Electrothermal Dynamic Stripping Process. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Uh, and they are one of the very few companies uh, in Canada who use this process. This is Macmillan McGee Corporation. And the envelope, please. The winner for the Environmental Stewardship Award, Green Start Initiatives. Now, as is, as is quite common with entrepreneurs and small business people, they multitask. And Kevin Davies, who is the founder and CEO of Green Start Initiatives, regrets that he can't be with us here this evening. He's had a long-standing uh, um, uh, commitment as the guest speaker at the Acumen Fund event, uh, Dignity 2012, which is happening right now over in the East Village. Uh, this is another example of how small businesses give back to the community. But I'm delighted to accept this award on his behalf, and with any luck, I'll actually give it to him. <laughs> sure, thank you. Yeah, great. <laughs> Now, I want to also mention uh, when the uh, winners come to the stage, they're going to have a photo with Adam and our presenter and our beautiful awards right now that are covered up. Here we go. Excited about this year. The Customer Service Excellent Award we're talking about now. It is presented by WestJet, and I would like to now invite to the podium WestJet's Corporate Account Manager, uh, Carly Kincaid, to help present this award. Thank you, Andrew. At WestJet, we pride ourselves on customer service. WestJet was named J.D. Power 2011 Customer Service Champion. Our research shows there are three components and elements to a great WestJet experience. Making guests feel stress-free and safe, being friendly and caring, and making guests smile. This can translate into many businesses. And it is the people that help make, make it what it is. If the people have a passion for what they do, this is what makes them successful. And now, for this year's finalist for the Customer Service Excellent Award, which WestJet is a proud sponsor. First, health, or first, first is HealthSpan Inc., a different type of massage company. As a mobile massage company, it takes its service right into the homes and offices of busy Calgarians. Those services go beyond just regular massage therapy. They include manicures, pedicures, personal training, facials, reflexology, and acupuncture. As well as the busy Calgarians they service, it should be notes that over 35% of their clients are over the age of 75 who are staying in care homes. The other finalist is WAPO Information Services, who provides small businesses with IT support. That includes everything from managing its com a company's IT infrastructure to implementing new systems and providing 24-7 on-site telephone support. A small business itself, WAPO focuses on providing its small and medium-sized business, medium businesses clients with top quality support at a flat fee, allowing their customers to manage their costs effectively. And the winner is...
WAPO Information Services. Honestly, we're honored, to be honest. We, when we made it on the finalists, it was just stunning as it was, and now we made it here and we got this award. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you, Carly, and congratulations to WAPO. David Sprague, we've got you up on stage here. I'd like you to help us now present the 2012 Innovation Award. Fabulous. Uh, that was really good. Uh, innovation drives our economy and advances how we live and work. The finalists for the 2012 Innovation Award have all demonstrated innovation in their business concept, work processes, or product creation, and have successfully brought their innovation to the market. Here are your finalists. Blackline GPS Corporation. They develop and sell a number of GPS products that can be used to monitor a worker's safety while he or she is in the field or locate and track cars, stolen vehicles, or even loved ones who get stuck on the side of the road. Blackline can boast a client list that has included NMAX Power, the Calgary Zoo, the Denver Zoo, the Minnesota Department of Correction, and the American Red Cross. Blackline GPS Corp. Our next finalist, Medium Rare, creates killer apps for iPhones and other smartphones, most of which help to make the lives of Calgarians just a little bit easier. Medium Rare, Medium Rare has cre uh, created nine apps so far. The most popular of these apps is Next Stop, which lets Calgary transit riders access the latest bus and train times from their mobile device. Medium Rare. Our next finalist is Sharp Insurance. They're a brokerage that provides car, home, and commercial insurance for Albertans. And while you may not think that insurance companies are innovation leaders, Sharp belies this image by having developed a slick looking website, as well as devoting a lot of their attention to the social media marketing aimed at a younger audience. Building on this approach, they were one of the first insurance brokerages in Canada to create an iPhone app for their clients. This app lets clients report claims right at the scene of an accident using GPS and photo technology, and afterwards, it helps direct them to the nearest repair shop. I could probably use that. Sharp Insurance. Good luck, everyone. And the winner is Sharp Insurance. Yeah, we were uh, we were pretty surprised to be uh, to be nominated for the innovation uh, innovation award. Insurance is the is the, one of the most boring industries out there, <laughs> and not really that popular. But we'd like to think we did things a little bit different. So we're uh, thank you for this. We're we're, we're ecstatic. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you, David. Our next category is the Community Involvement Award. 
It's presented by the Calgary Airport Authority. And to present the award, please welcome Jody Mosley, Director of Corporate Communications and Marketing at the Calgary Airport Authority. Jody, come on up. Thank you, Andrew. Community involvement is important to the vitality and the success of any city. That success is built by businesses and people working together to make a world-class city that continues to develop its infrastructure and economy without losing sight of the people and the community it is a part of. The Calgary Airport Authority strives to be a positive part of our community and we hope that as we grow and develop your airport, that it not only connects businesses as well as people um, to the community and the world, but it also contributes to making our community a better place. <clears throat> we are proud to present the Community Involvement Award this evening to uh, an impressive list of finalists who have shown their commitment to being part of our amazing and vibrant city. Our first finalist is Bamboo Creative Inc who provide businesses with social media marketing services and design work. The boutique firm started in 2010 when it saw the need for a cost-effective provider of these services in Calgary. To date, Bamboo has completed 150 projects with just under uh, 50 clients. Bamboo volunteers hundreds of hours and its media savvy, savvy expertise to such great causes such as Movember and the Alberta Breast Cancer Foundation. Our second finalist, um, when a charity or a not-for-profit needs to raise money, it calls Elevate Auctions. They know how to enhance um, fundraising events. Since 2009, Elevate has been providing a number of live, silent, and online auction services to charities and not-for-profits in Calgary. The most popular service is the live auction where Elevate's third generation auctioneer with 30 years of experience and a skilled spotter work the room to raise the most money they possibly can. And those not-for-profit organizations that don't know the first thing about auction-related fundraising, Elevate also has services to help them out. Every year, Elevate helps over 250 charities and not-for-profits. Our third finalist is Self Connection Books. They are an independent bookstore and an active force in the community. Three years ago, the building that Self Connection was operating out of was sold, and the bookstore was left looking for a new home. For years, the bookstore, which focuses on selling related, uh, materials relating to mental health and spiritual growth, had received requests from the community to use the space to host meetings. But that was ne never able to be accommodated because the space was too small and cramped. So when the time came to look for a new home, Self Connection took it as a sign of fate and they decided to act on what they'd been hearing from the community. The bookstore relocated in the neighborhood of Montgomery and went to work on building a 750 square foot meeting space for 50 people. The space includes kitchens, a kitchen, bathrooms, a 12 foot TV screen, high speed internet and a state of the art video equipment. Space, it generally donates to community groups. Thank you to all three companies for everything you do for the community, and good luck. And the winner is... The community involvement winner is Self Connect Bucks. Nine years ago, Marla and I bought the store. And in the last nine years in the book industry, we've seen a lot of changes. 
We've seen introduction of e-books, and Amazon has become a major force. And a consequence of that is that many of the independent bookstores today are struggling or are going out of business. Now, I'm a very big admirer of Amazon. I absolutely respect what they do. I have huge respect for how they do it. But what Amazon does not do is build community. They don't hire people here and pay salaries. They don't invest in real estate here. They don't give money to charities. They don't help fundraising activities. And every time you buy a book from Amazon or anything from Amazon, that money leaves our community and it leaves our country. So having said that, I, I guess I have respect for them, but we build community. Small businesses build community. That's what we do. And so we are very pleased and proud of what we do. It's what we do every day. It's what keeps us going. And despite the challenge of competing with an Amazon today, I'd like to say that this award is what, I guess, endorses what we do. It uh, says that there's people out there that believe in what we do, and that's, that's a bit of encouragement that is really nice to have right now. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for this initiative, for the vision. Thank you for ATB and all the sponsors for supporting such a wonderful week of celebrating small business. Small business is truly a wonderful thing. And uh, the only suggestion I'd have for the future is the award is great, it's encouraging, but if we could throw in a million dollars to the winners, <laughs> that'd be equally as cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. <clears throat>Donuts, that's right. So the finalists are Everline Coding and Services. They are a property maintenance company that handles everything from parking lot sweeping and cleaning to landscaping, excavating, and snow removal. The company also paints the yellow parking lines for shopping centers, strip malls, parkades, distribution depots, big box retailers, hotels, hospitals, and schools. Since starting its business in January of this year, Everline has grown significantly, and its client, client base includes major organizations such as the Rocky View General Hospital, the Foothills Medical Center, and the Alberta Children's Hospital, as well as companies like Walmart and the Chinook Center. Everline Coding and Services. Our next finalist is Posh View, Inc. They are a software development company that wants to be the next thing the next big thing in interactive technology. Posh View's technology is something you would expect to see in a Hollywood movie like Minority Report or The Avengers. Take the company's interactive mirror platform as an example. At first glance, it looks just like a regular mirror, but you know, a regular mirror that just hangs in your bathroom. But if you touch the bottom right hand corner, the mirror actually comes to life streaming live, Andrew, you're gonna love this, streaming live TV news, giving you the weather updates and live video feed of what it looks like outside so you know what to wear while you're getting ready for work. You can also download your favorite apps, use the mirror to read your Twitter feeds while you're brushing your teeth, and do pretty much anything else you do online or on your tablet. Posh View Inc. Jelly Modern Donuts is a gourmet donut bakery. Hmm. When it opened its doors a few years ago, it was Canada's only specialty donut shop. 
Today, it's become a major player in, Cal in Calgary's dessert scene. The donuts that Jelly Modern make are different than the fried and frozen donuts that you've come to expect from your local donut chain. They are handmade, baked, and carefully dipped and decorated to create a number of specialty flavors. Think peanut butter and jelly, or maple bacon, and there's even a donut named after our mayor, the Nenshi Salted Caramel Donut. Unbelievable. That's Jelly Modern Donuts. Breakout Business of the Year winner, Everline Coatings and Services. Uh, I, um, I'm a very competitive guy, and you know what's I've started in my spare bedroom, um, and you know uh, going against you know fantastic companies like you know Jelly Modern Donuts and Posh Views. It's like how on earth could a property maintenance company even compare? <laughs> you know it's it's just far more sexier. But uh, anyways, a lot of hard work went in nonetheless. Um, I guess the the main thing I was you know thinking I was going to say was um, you know every entrepreneur they they. You know, they grow up and they say, you know, when I make a million dollars, I'm going to have that mansion, all that kind of stuff. I'm nowhere near that yet, but uh, the, I just, I never really let go of that. <clears throat> and um, all, like what, what came into it, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to, I had this rehearsed in my head a hundred times. But anyways, um, what, uh, anyway, okay, now I know. Um, <laughs> I knew that like, I had to measure success as I went into my adult entrepreneurial life and everything like that. I had to measure my success somehow. Whenever the, uh, some people ma ma manage it in money and other people manage it in other things, that kind of thing. But I always measured it in how, you know, my, how my younger self would look at you know, my future self. You know, I'm kind of a back to the future nerd and that kind of thing. So, um, and I know that if I went back in time in a DeLorean, uh, the <laughs> Uh, and I showed this to my younger self, uh, he would be pretty pumped. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Congratulations, and in case you're wondering, it's still illegal to have plutonium in your house <laughs> for those people. Congratulations to Everline. And speaking of those millions, uh, the Lotto Max tomorrow night, I think it's 75 million bucks. How would that work in the business? That would be a little injection of cash. And, and self-connection, I think, would approve with that. <laughs> 75 million. We're now here at the final award of the night, and it's the prestigious RBC Small Business of the Year Award. As well as being judged on all four categories, the three finalist companies for this award had to undergo additional rigor, uh, rigorous uh, uh, rigors, rather. Again, it's like it's a, like 12:30 for me right now. Uh, <laughs> regarding their financial performance and operations, in order to be considered even for this award, to present this prestigious award, please welcome Tasmoon Ratanshi, Sales Manager, Small Business, RBC Royal Bank. Thank you, Andrew, and good evening. It is a pleasure for me to represent RBC here tonight. We are here to celebrate the successes and accomplishments of small businesses and entrepreneurs. I know many of these businesses personally, and I'm so proud of their accomplishments. RBC is honored to be able to share in this moment with you. At RBC, we aim to help small businesses succeed. Providing financial solutions is only a part of our role. We are here to help our clients compete on a local, national, and even international level. We help them become more successful by sharing our resources, introducing them to time saver tools, and providing advice to help them manage their growth. We believe that partnering with our clients is the best way to help them achieve their goals. 
We understand that your success means continued growth and sustainability in Canada's economy. This adds to the vitality in communities where we live and work. Tonight, it is my honor to present the 2012 RBC Small Business of the Year Award. The nominees are WAPO Informational Services, Macmillan McGee Corporation, and Elevate Auctions. Congratulations to each of you for making it to this point. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. The winner of the 2012 RBC Small Business of the Year Award is Elevate Auctions. First of all, thanks to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, definitely thanks to all the small businesses uh, in Calgary. Um, it's really quite an honor. Uh, and it's funny, uh, David mentioned Acumen. They're using Elevate Services tonight, so that's great. <laughs> the auction starts at 9.30 if you want to rush over there. Um, no, we just, thank you, we're really surprised. Yeah. Um, we're four generations of auction. I'm third, the girls are fourth. So uh, to achieve this is really nice, and we're looking so forward. We work with so many great nonprofits. Um, 251 counting acumen tonight, I guess, uh, and we're really looking forward to, to helping all nonprofits, big, small, little, new ones, uh, helps volunteers. So we're really looking forward to, uh, to the future and raising lots of money for some great charities. Anyway, thank you so much. Congrats to Elevate, and what a prestigious honor. And if you didn't get it, what David said uh, when they were all lining up here, because it was the biggest group of the evening, it was like having the cast of Modern Family uh, <laughs> accepting an Emmy. Uh, Modern Family, which airs on City TV, same station. <laughs> you can watch breakfast television five days a week, 5.30 tonight. I digress. I think that we're done the official portion of this evening. What a great evening. And again, a huge round of applause to all the winners this evening. Small businesses like the winners and that are represented in this building drive Calgary's economy and our community, and we thank you for doing all that you've done in the past 12 months. Thank you again to the 2012 Small Business Sponsors, award sponsors RBC Royal Bank, WestJet, and the Calgary Airport Authority, Business Expo Sponsor, First Calgary Financial, Official Communications Supplier for Small Business Week Calgary, Rogers Communications. Starfish, the official design agency of Small Business Week Calgary. Starfish and Calgary Small Business Week, powered by sponsor ATB Business. And finally, thank you all for taking the time out on a Thursday evening, as mentioned. The Expo, actually, and we're excited that we have a full event attached to these awards. Right next door will be going on until 9.30, so go and check things out. Uh, do some networking, have some food and drink, and enjoy your night. And a reminder, if you've had too much to drink, please remember to take a cab home. Uh, Metropolitan Centre or any Calgary Chamber staff will be happy to call a cab for you. I'm Andrew Schultz from City TV Breakfast Television. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Have a great night. <laughs>